starting out dilemmas. In this video, we're going to cover the lift scheme, which is a shared equity scheme in Scotland for buying a house. We're going to cover low deposits and credit history. Coming up in a second. Hey clan, it's Ross Stese, aka The Bearded Broker, and today's video we've got some questions. We've got another four questions from the community, which is Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and all the other social channels. Each week I bring out a video to YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook covering anything to do with mortgages. My name is Ross Stese. I am a mortgage broker and have been for 14 years. I help lots of first-time buyers and I help lots of next-time buyers either get on the property ladder or move up further the property ladder. I also help the people at the top of the ladder come back down the way when they're downsizing, etc. So I'm the Bearded Broker. I take questions each week and today starts out with Alec from Fife. So we've got Alec from Fife asking... Should I go for a larger deposit or one as low as possible? Very good question, Alec. Now, it will depend upon your circumstances, but I say to people, put in as much money as you can comfortably afford, making sure to keep some cash aside. You need some cash for a rainy day, because when the roof gets damaged, or the boiler needs replaced, or some other unforeseen thing happens, you need to make sure you've got enough cash set aside in the bank. So I always say to my clients, put as much money down as you can because the bigger the deposit, typically the better the interest rate that you will get. Therefore, the less interest you will pay over time. So put in as much as you can, Alec, and keep keep a good chunk of money aside. Five to ten thousand pound would be a reasonable number if possible. If that's not possible because you're strapped already and you have to put all that money in, I would try and get into the habit to save as much cash as possible, as quickly as possible. So hopefully that answers a question and hopefully that helps the wider community out there. Next, we've got Peter from Paisley. Peter is asking, shall I use the lift scheme for a bigger property or go for a smaller one without help? So the lift scheme, it's what's known as a shared equity scheme. Essentially, the government are helping you as a first-time buyer buy a property, whereby in the future, if you profit from it, they'll make a bit of profit and you make a bit of profit and everyone's a winner. I always say to my clients, unless you really need to use one of these schemes, then don't. Because, you know, I would kind of prefer to have all the profit in the future. So if you're buying a bigger property for the right reasons and not just because you can, then as long as you're doing it for the right reasons, you know, you're perhaps planning to have a family or that sort of thing. But if not, just buy what you need or a little bit more than what you need, perhaps another bedroom, and then, you know, you'll you'll benefit from all that that value increase over the years. Uh, so hopefully that helps, Peter, and, you know, leave any comments below and and by all means please please do like the channel please do subscribe to the channel if you're on facebook or linkedin hit that thumbs up button that'd be much appreciated so nina from glasgow so nina do i have to have a solicitor and when should i appoint one so nina yes you do need to have a solicitor if you want to buy a property in scotland a solicitor needs and has to legally do all the legal work so yes, you will need to appoint a solicitor. I always advise appointing a solicitor as early as possible. That way you have a connection already. We are happy to recommend a solicitor, by the way, that we use all the time. But we, So you have a connection with that solicitor already, you have contact details already, and you've had a chat. So what typically happens is you'll speak to a mortgage broker like me. We'll help you get what's called a decision in principle. So that will mean that we've done a credit check with a lender and all is looking good. You go out and look for properties. When you do find a property and you maybe want to put an offer in on that property, you don't want to be waiting around. So you want to be able to pick up the phone to the solicitor and say, I have seen a property in 1A High Street. Here's the full address. Can you please put an offer in? Then they will do that for you. Now, that solicitor will also be able to advise you what properties have sold for in that area. So if all the one beds are selling for 
£150,000 and you want to put on 170 they will advise you that that's a bad idea. And on the other side of the, the, the coin, if they're, if they're all valued at 150 but they're all selling for 170 they will advise you accordingly what they think you need to put in to be in with a chance of getting that property. So hopefully that helps, Nina. Next, we've got Jasmine from Edinburgh. How much should I set aside to offer overvaluation on a property I am looking to buy in Edinburgh? So Jasmine, at the date of recording this, which is the 9th of December 2021, that number could be very, very high in terms of a percentage overvaluation. But it will depend where in Edinburgh and what it is you're buying in Edinburgh. Stock, when we call when we say stock in this industry, it's properties available, at the moment is very, very low and the demand is high. And therefore, a lot of the properties are going for 10, 20, 30, 40% over what they're worth. Again, the solicitor will be able to advise you a realistic number that you'll need to go to to be in with a chance. I've got friends at the moment who are, they've finally had an offer accepted, so which is great news for them, but they've been in the market for quite some time. Some of the properties they were going to go and see, they got a phone call the next day saying, I'm sorry, it's been taken off the market because someone's put in some crazy offer. So don't be put off and frightened by that. Markets go up and down. You know, it wasn't all that long ago that all the houses were selling at fixed prices and nothing was going, what they call offers over the valuation. So again... We've got blogs on our website, so stisa.co.uk, S-T-I-S-I.co.uk. I'll put a link below to these blogs. We've got blogs on what these sort of terms mean. I've also got a blog on the lift scheme as well. Uh, so Peter from Paisley asked about the lift scheme, and we've got lots of helpful resources on there. So Jasmine, I always say to clients, put in as much as you can afford, because that's what you've got. You can't you know, magic money out of nowhere. So if you've only got 10,000 to put in offers over, then only put in the 10,000, but your solicitor will be able to advise what is a reasonable number. So hopefully that has been of use. As I said, I bring a weekly video to the community and hopefully we can all help each other. Please put in any comments uh, in the sections below on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. And if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us reach more people. And it tells the YouTube gods what we're up to. So it's Ross Stacey from the Stacey Group. We're trusted mortgage experts and I am the bearded broker. And I'll see you again next week. Thank you.